The subject of today's episode is a method of torture which might not seem too painful until you are actually put in it and the beatings begin. Using nothing more than a pole and some rope, this method goes back to the early 16th century and, depending on who you listen to, is still in use today. Used for hundreds of years on unruly slaves, but becoming famous for its use in the 1960s and 70s during the military dictatorship in Brazil, we'll give you the history, best we can, on one of South America's most feared torture methods. Today we cover Pau de Arara. Young. And I'm the goose to his maverick, Dan <laughs> Harrigan. <laughs> and this is torture. <laughs> Yeah, we watched the two Top Guns and did you? Uh, the, the new, hot, hot Shots yeah. the, the last week. <laughs> hot shots is be- I think Hot Shots is better than Top Gun myself. Yeah. But, uh, you know, whatever. Hot Shots putt. But, uh. and I came to a realisation halfway through watching Hot Shots again because I hadn't watched it in so many years is that the storyline for Hot Shots is the same as the storyline for Maverick. Even though it's Hot Shots is taking the piss out of the first Top Gun. Yeah. If you look at it, getting this, it, it's because the way uh, Hot Shots isn't about the school. It's about them getting this group together of Hot Shot pilots to take out this fucking secret installation, nuclear installation in the yeah. middle of a desert or whatever. Yeah. And they have to train them how to do all these different things. And so basically it's the exact same storyline. <laughs> so for Matt, for, so for Top Gun 2, they copied the storyline for Hot Shots. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen the new Top Gun, so I'm not. I I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, it's not that I don't want to see it. It's just you know, it's not the movie that was like on the top of my list to go see. I wasn't like it's good. I wasn't like a giant Top Gun fan. It was you know, it's all right. It is what it is, but yeah, it wasn't something that I like loved. Loved. So I'll see it eventually. Yeah, I've heard that it's really good. I've heard from a lot of people that it's really good. But it is. Yeah, ain't a patch on the original. It's good. Yeah. Well, there you go. A movie time with Dan and Kevin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we get started, let's do a call to action, something we have not done in a little while. Um, go follow us and message us on Instagram. I've been trying to get more followers on Instagram. I've been really pushing for it. Um, cause we always post pics of what we're talking about, maybe add on to the episode a little bit in that way. So, you know, also, if you direct message us on there or on Twitter or email us, we'll read it on the show and call you out. So if you want to hear your name on the show, hop in those DMs. I might message ourselves just to hear my just name. Just all enough to mention Dan. Yep. I don't ever get mentioned anymore. Now, I have to um, apologize to our Portuguese and Brazilian listeners. There's going to be a couple words and names in here that I'm probably, even though I've listened to how they are pronounced uh, a couple times, probably still going to fuck it up. So, I think that's kind of what's expected at this <laughs> stage. Like, it wouldn't be an episode of torture without either of us mispronouncing some foreign person's name. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, why can't they have normal names like Dave and Andrew or something? Like... <laughs> If we all just spoke Esperanto, that would make everything so much better. Every every letter is pronounced exactly the same every single time. I don't know why we don't. We should all speak the same language. Just get it over with. Well, before we start, I'm going to jump in here real quick and tell everybody who's looking, go and buy yourself a hat. Oh, Look at it. Here it is. It's beautiful, delicious. Beautiful shirt, too. It's fantastic. Love it. Well, we'll get to that in a while. <laughs> I'm going to space them out. I'm going to space them out throughout the episode. I just randomly interrupt you and be like, hey, boom! Advertisement. 
Speaking of horrible pain, look at this T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dan, let's take you back to early 1970s Brazil. You yourself are not a political activist. However, you are acquaintances with a few, and so are guilty by association. So you take to yeah, a we've cell. already established I'm a I'm an orange thief or something. <laughs> so you stole from you stole from you stole oranges from the military. Yeah. Uh, so you take it to a cell and questioned, who do you know in activism? What guerrilla forces are you part of? Where do you stand on how the military is handling the country? You know, shit like that. <laughs> regular old stuff. <laughs> just just the <laughs> just the regular old questions. Uh, your answers aren't how they say up to snuff. You'd probably be taken to a salle de pau or a perch room and stripped naked. Now your hands are tied together, and then your ankles, and they force you into a squat position and force your arms down around your legs. They take a pole. So far, it sounds like an average Saturday night. There you go. Go on. Then they take a pole or a stick and slide it. Dan's getting more excited every second. A <laughs> Slide it over your arm, under your legs, and then over your other arm. And then pick you up by the pole. Squat down and you're like hugging your own legs. And then the pole goes through your legs. It's over your arms. So they, you know, they hoist you up. You are now officially in the Pau de Arara. Or the Parrot's Perch. Or the Macaw's Perch. Or the Parrot's Stick depending on the definition you read. I've read, like, I don't know, a handful of them. But if you go to, like, Google Translate and you type it in, it's none of those. So I don't know. But it's Parrot's Perch, Macaw's Perch, Parrot Stick, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You're like a bird on a fucking stick, pretty much. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Very uncomfortable bird. Yes. Yeah. Now, depending on how long you stay in this position, you can have long-lasting damage to your knees, calves, tendons, arms, wrists. But at the time, that's the last thing you're worried about. Because once they have you hoisted up in this perch, you are open to a multitude of torture methods and devices. Now, if you listen to our Rats episode, you may remember the name of Colonel Carlos Brillante Ustra. Uh, it was kind of, uh, Dan, I think, may have mentioned some about him um, when I was having my technical difficulties, and it became the Dan show, and I spoke a little bit oh, of yeah. him after I came back. Um, he was the head torturer for the military dictatorship during the years of lead in Brazil, and his favorite thing to do, or to order be done, was to have prisoners put up in the parrot's perch and then electrocuted. Jesus. <laughs> Usually in the genitals. I was going to say, yeah, let me guess, right in the balls. Yeah. Uh, electrified oh, boards would be slapped against the privates of both men and women of all ages. Uh, and if the torturer, or in many cases, the police officer, was in a fairly randy mood, the female prisoners would be... Trigger warning for sexual <laughs> trigger warning for sexual assault. Uh, you might want to hop forward a few seconds if this type of stuff really bothers you. Uh, they would be raped by an electrified broomstick. No, I'm not anymore. Okay. <laughs> Way to kill the mood, Jose Cuervo, whatever the hell his name is. Jose Cuervo Ustra. His name was his last name. Ustra. Oh, whatever. <laughs> his first name Jose was it? Was I right? Uh, no, Carlos. I can't remember. Ah, whatever. It was one of those names. It was a name of some sort. In that you, instance, you were right. It was a name. Uh, but yeah, that's not all. If they still didn't give the answers they were looking for, you could get beaten until your bones broke, whipped until you bled, and dunked. Now, for this, they would hang you over a pool of water and lower you in until your head was submerged, and they would leave you there until you stopped squirming. Long enough to simulate drowning, but not long enough to actually kill you, hopefully. Or they would just pour water into your mouth and nose and let you gasp for air. Pretty much uh, well, water waterboarding water. without the cloth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a torture omnibus. <laughs> no. Uh, 
don't know what my dog is doing, but I can hear him running through the house and his nail, his nails all over the kitchen floor. So you got excited when you heard about the electrified, <laughs> electrified so genitals. He's like, I don't have nuts. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Do your worst. <laughs> He'd probably like it. He's a weird dog. So they even had torture classes back then where students would learn what criminals go through if they dared break the law. Uh, one of the guinea pigs for these classes was a young woman by the name of Dolce, Ch- Dolce Chavez Pandolfi, a student and member of the armed guerrilla group, the National Liberation Alliance, fighting against the dictatorship. So she's arrested, obviously, for being a guerrilla fighter. Sits in prison for a while, about two months. Then she stripped naked, put in the parrot's perch, and carried into one of these classes, where, of course, she was tortured, mostly by electrocution, until she began to feel ill. So they took her back to her cell. Now, why you would take her back to her cell because she's feeling ill, ill, I don't know. The whole purpose is to torture her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Please stop torturing me. I feel sick. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? You can I get a slip from the doctor so I don't have to go today because <laughs> I have a tummy ache. <laughs> I don't know if they just didn't want to. Like, sorry, you've used all your sick leave days <laughs> for the year. But I have a personal vacation day waiting. <laughs> I I have one of those. Uh so they took her back to her cell. A doctor came in. Took her blood pressure and then said, ah, she's all right. She can continue. And she gets the union involved. <laughs> I guess I'm to torture human resources. Uh, so they came, took her back out to the yard this time, not to the class, uh, outside. Tied her to a post and had the students play Russian roulette with her several times over. Now they put a bag on her head, ripped the bag off. And when they take the bag off, she's got a gun pointing at her face. It's got one bullet in the chamber, and they she just they just start letting the students, you know, spin the barrel and then pull the trigger. Luckily, she lived to see the fall of the dictatorship, and you know, later. Uh, but still, yeah, terrifying deer hunter uh, memories abound. Yeah, it's because it's very like very lucky. Yep. Those odds to not have anything happen. Uh huh. Yeah, it didn't yeah. say how many times and how many students. It just said uh, several of the students got to handle the gun and play Russian roulette with her. So, oh, so two or three, and you're already using up all your luck. Yeah, pretty much. Well, one, that, so. and you're very, you know, and, and you know, you yeah. the odds are in your favor. Anything after that, and they are no longer. <laughs> Especially if it's a spin, and then click, click, click. And they just keep pulling the trigger. Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a spin, pull, spin, pull, you know, maybe. But if they just keep pull, keep pulling the trigger, uh, that's a problem. Though it's said that yeah. in the four years Ustra was the head torturer, 502 people were tortured and 40 murdered. Many of them went through the same type of torment. The perch was used on almost all of them including a one Dilma Rousseff. Again, I'm probably destroying these names. Some of you might know that name if I pronounced it correctly. I'm guessing most of you don't. I didn't until I did my reading, because I don't try to stay abreast of 100% of everything that's going on in the world, especially a few Why years Why not? But <laughs> For shame, Kevin. I know. Keep up our current affairs everywhere. God damn it. I'm I, I'm not an expert in the cultural ongoings of Brazil. I apologize. It's one of my downfalls. I'm working on it. Good for you. Anyway, <laughs> continue. So Dilma, a student at the Federal Federal University of Minas Gerais, which again, probably not right, in the late sixties and early seventies joined the National Liberation Commandos at age 20, a militant group dedicated to fighting the military di- dictatorship. Again. Now, at age 22, she was arrested and taken to a place called The Tower because it was a tower. See how that works? 
apparently had oh, yeah L L Tower like L Tower L Tower. So while in prison there, she was stripped. She goes into a whole big thing about how they like created a whole community there with people before and after they were tortured and all this stuff. I'm not going to get into that because that's not what it's about. Um, but while she was in prison there, she was stripped naked, put in the parrot's perch, beaten, left on the cold floor naked, and possibly even raped. All while she's in the perch. It's not like... They put her in it, beat her, and let her go. They put her in it, yeah, yeah. beat her, left her on the ground in it, and then she didn't want to get into uh, all the details of it. But there's a good possibility that while she was on the ground in the Parrot's Purge, she was also raped. But she would be eventually released about three years later and survive the dictatorship and go on in 2011 to become the first female president of Brazil. Oh, yes. Uh, she served in a few cabinets for different leaders and advisory positions, but yeah, eventually she worked her way up um, to becoming the uh, president of Brazil. And when they eventually uh, impeach her, because Brazil politically just kind of goes all over the goddamn place, uh, they used this against her. So she was captured and tortured, so she shouldn't be uh, she shouldn't be president. How that works. All oh, right, so they kind of like as if she isn't of stable mind. Well, the or... the people who were uh, going against her, like uh, Bolsonaro, who became president uh, a few years ago and then was you know voted out. He he did so. I don't remember if I don't know if you remember or were privy to the election of uh, twenty sixteen here when when Trump ended up winning, um, but him and John McCain had this kind of this beef and cause John McCain was a war hero who got captured, stayed, uh, he was a, you know, VO POW in Vietnam. Trump had said something along the lines of, I like my heroes who haven't been captured. <laughs> uh, which is, you know, a stupid and to make big. him out to be a weaker person because yeah. he, that's captured, yeah. that's kind of the route they had taken uh, with her, right? Yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah. Just being genuine assholes about it. Dan, I have a confession to make. I have crabs, beard dandruff. It's close. <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look away, I'm hideous. All serious, all, all serious, <laughs> all serious, all serious, be serious now, no funny, no more. <laughs> Frankenstein, no fire, bad, ah. In all seriousness, many of us men with facial hair have some sort of dry skin under their you know, face fur. I, I have particularly dry skin, uh, especially on my face, around my nose, my eyes, ears, that beard and mustache, they draw a ton of moisture from your skin in order to stay healthy, leaving the skin underneath sometimes dry, itchy, red, flaky, leading to uh, the beard dandruff. And I struggled with it for quite a while. Struggled to, you know, rein it in. Then I found thebeardstruggle.com. They use all natural products, never tested on animals, that your face, body, and beard will love. They have day oils to protect your beard from UV rays and dirt and grime, and it keeps your skin from drying out. All the troubles the day can bring. And they have night oils to help moisturize and rejuvenate your skin and beard while you sleep. Not to mention, as of right now, they have eight different fragrances. <laughs> according, Kevin. According to this. That's what they tell me. That's what they tell yeah. me. <laughs> do you want to know what they are? I do. I want you to. Ready? I want you to pronounce them perfectly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Okay. Yeah. From Alfheim's Forest, which has a scent of woodsy leather and spices, to Heonir's Home, <laughs> Close with scents of greenery, amber, and musk, to Valhalla's Gates, with essences of citrus, amber, sandalwood, and vanilla. Mm -hmm. And right now, 
Yes, right now I'm using the Aesir's Triumph, which I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, which has the scent of sweet incense, tobacco, whiskey, and cinnamon, and my wife absolutely loves it. Of course, I haven't gotten one from them they haven't loved, that she hasn't loved, so. And if you can't choose, just get the sample pack, which comes with six of their mainstay scents and five milliliter bottles of nighttime elixir, so you can decide what is best for you. But they have so much more than just oils, balms, wax, shampoo, conditioner, butters, cologne, natural deodorant, skincare products, heated beard straighteners, combs, brushes, shaving kits, growth kits, merch, list goes on and on and on. No matter what kind, length, or style of facial hair you have, the Beard Struggle has the products you need. You get a free gift for purchases over $50, and you get another free gift for purchases over $100, and all orders over $65 US dollars get free shipping. You have a 90 day money back guarantee, so you really have nothing to lose. And be sure to use our exclusive coupon code TORTURE19 at checkout to get 19% off your entire order. That's T O R T U R E 19 at checkout for 19% off your entire order. TORTURE19 at checkout or click on the link in the show notes. TheBeardStruggle.com. Do what's right for your beard, do what's right for your face. So when did this all start? When did the Parrot's Perch become a Brazilian torture staple? Well, for that, we have to go all the way back to the 16th century and the Atlantic slave trade. Now, when most people think of the slave trade, they think of America. Which they should. Naturally. Which they yeah. should. I'm, this is in no way saying, yeah, but. It's like those people... Uh, who, who, who are like you, uh, yeah, but uh, black people own slaves too. This that it, it, I'm not making excuses for anything. This is not what that is. We we were horrible, even after the European nations outlawed the practice. Which again, if you're gonna think of uh the slave trade, you should really think of Europe too, because it did happen there too. But again, America <laughs> takes the front of it, which again we should. Uh, but after always have to go bigger and better over there, you see. That's yes. the thing. Somebody does something, you have to go. Nah, let's do it times ten. Yeah, we we kind of went so. a little crazy with it. Even after European nations outlawed the practice, we held strong onto the thought that white men shouldn't have to do any actual work, and people that were different were inferior and practically non-human. So this is again no way defense of America when it comes to slavery. Whether it's a hundred or hundred million, it was horrible. All right, just get that out of the wonder way if now. the I wonder if the same discussion would be happening over guns in a couple of hundred years. I I hope that we're having the discussion of, remember how fucking horrible we were and everybody was going around just shooting at each other? God, we were stupid. I really hope so. Also, you remember how people had to spend, like, all of their life savings on medical bills? God, we were stupid. I hope all that gets, you know fixed but this is that's a different podcast yeah Ugh. it's a different kind of torture yeah so if you, you again america was horrible but i hate i hate, wish there's a different way to put it because that makes it sound like i'm defending us but not but if you want to talk about the top offender when it came to slavery the country that far exceeded the amount of of and cruelty to slaves, both African and native, then looks no further than Brazil. What was that? Damn it. <laughs> Is that the English? <laughs> the English. Uh, I, th- I think we outdid the English when it came to slaves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they had the whole, they had the whole country. Yeah. So they did. I mean, they, they were, the English was, were kind of, you know, the first they were like the ones that, you know, they were the big ones, kind of the ones that brought it into the, you know, the mainstream. Like, look at what we're doing, guys. You know, do this. <laughs> they were doing yeah. slavery before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were the hipsters <laughs> of fucking slavery. <laughs> and then America, and then, you know, America's, you know. They got to get in on that. Yeah, they're like, oh, we'll do it. And then we took it to, like, we made it not cool anymore. 
it's like, oh shit, yeah. now, now, now the kids are doing it, so we don't want to do it anymore. Um, but Brazil, uh, the Brazil, bulldozer of slavery. Oh, yeah. Bra- so if if England was the hipster that started it, and America is kind of the person, kind of who uh, just took it to that level where it's like it's not really cool anymore. Brazil was that one guy that you run into that's just like all decked out in the stupid shit and like taking it to an extreme where it's like, I don't want to do this anymore type when you see that, when you see them, uh, once you see somebody covered from head to toe in like Gucci and you're like, I don't think I want Gucci anymore. Uh, this, that was Brazil. So long before the Europeans colonized Brazil, the indigenous people of the country would enslave the members of each other's tribes. A lot of them were cannibalistic. It was uh, kind of a weird thing, but it was a bunch of little tribes in the air. It wasn't technically Brazil anymore. It was just, you know, this area. And they'd go and they'd kidnap one another and make them their slaves and uh you know, sometimes they'd be married off to people in the tribe and, and sometimes they'd be sold and they're, you know, they'd have babies and they'd be part of the tribe. It was a whole big thing. So they were doing this long before the Europeans came. But when the Portuguese showed up in the early 1500s, they quickly became the top slave owners in the region. And over the next few years, tens of thousands of indigenous people were captured and enslaved. Big problem, though, they didn't know anything about sugarcane farming. European and European diseases killed them way too quickly. So, uh, I, I'm reminded of Ace Ventura when nature calls. The white man came and brought disease, and then he sneezes on the one guy. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I watched that movie in so long. But that was a big problem for people living in central, northern, central, and South America uh, before it was America. Uh, you know, because Europeans, um, white people were gross. They had a lot of diseases. Yeah, we still are. Yeah, still yeah. are. Uh, the only thing that we didn't bring really with us over from Europe is, I believe, syphilis. I be- if I remember right, the That's Native one of the Americans, ones, though. the Native Americans already had that here uh, when we Fair came. Enough, yeah. So, you know, it's the thing that binds all of us together. We're all one, one people because of syphilis. Uh, oh. But yeah, they would die. Like most of these indigenous people that were captured for slavery didn't live past the age of nineteen. So high turnover rates. Yeah, yeah. So they started... That's, that's, yeah. Jesus. If you think about it, how would there not just a ton of newly born infants lying there just on their own? <laughs> like, at that at rate, like... How old's he? Nobody take care of them. How old's he? 18? Oh, I'm getting a year out of him. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so they started bringing over a group that did know how to farm sugar cane and that have been around Europeans enough to be able to fight off certain white diseases, the Africans, who were able to survive those diseases an entire four years longer on average. So instead of dying off at 19, they normally died off at around 23. So, you know, Good age. bang for your buck. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah. and any, anything past that, they're they're past their prime and just, just you yeah. know. Yeah, they're pretty crap then. That's, that's, yeah. that's be honest Once they get the 24, it's, it's like Leonardo DiCaprio. Once they get the 24, you got to get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, through the next Leo. 250 years or so, African slaves would make up 70% of all immigrants to the colony. And out of the 12 million Africans that were taken from their homes and forced into slavery during the Atlantic slave trade, 5.5 million of them were sent straight to Brazil. That's about 45% of all the slaves during the Atlantic slave trade went to Brazil. So when I say that Brazil kind of took the ball and ran with it, that's what they did. Yeah. They made this... They just went overboard. They went a little overboard. Supersized. Yeah. They supersized it. Now, for all these Jesus slaves... Indigenous... That's, that's crazy, though, when you think about those numbers, like... 
really. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> that's. I mean, I'm trying to think of what city would be about five point five million, but that's it's a really big number. It's a really big number. I should have looked up what cities were five were around five point five million. Um, so I, I'll tell you right now. Okay, you do that. Oh, hold on. <laughs> They're like, are you looking up slave trade? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your search history. We haven't seen you in trade. three days. Um, St. Petersburg has 5.5. There you go. In Russia? Yeah. Russia? Yeah, same as Alexandria. Also. In Egypt? And um, Barcelona, a little bit more. Oh. It's 5.6. So that's, you know, drop of the ocean in comparison, really. So... Um, a couple of other places are close enough to that. Good old Zhengzhou in China. We've talked about there before. It's yeah. five point six. So yeah, you're kind of talking. Yeah, Hanoi, Sydney, Melbourne, all around the five point two mark. Yeah. So, so yeah. all those people just scooped up, thrown in Brazil, and uh, made us slaves. And for all That's of these crazy. slaves, indigenous or otherwise, the go-to disciplinary action taken against disobedient slaves was the parrot's perch. Now, if you talk back or out of turn or talk really at all, you get the perch. Tried to run off? Got the perch. Didn't work hard enough? Perch. Uh, first offense might of find you, yeah. First offense might find you on the ground in the perch. Didn't learn your lesson. You'd be put back in the perch and hung upside down. And this is where the severe muscle and tendon strain and uh, I would imagine severe headaches from being, you know, hanged upside down, head filling up with blood. Uh, you can actually die that way if you were left there long enough. But I'm sure some were. Because uh, there's no time limit. It's not one that I could find uh, as to how long you could be put in one and, and hung up there. It wasn't like... Uh, you know, we're only gonna do this to you for a few minutes. It's not out of the realm. Of however long they felt. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not out of the realm of possibility to think that you could spend hours or even days in this position. And I can't imagine you'd be able to move very well after you got out of it. You know what could help them with this? Get ready to cue the funky music. Is if you were to go to Redbubble.com and order yourself a sleep ass <laughs> T-shirt such as this one right here. <laughs> Good segue. Yeah. Uh, the t-shirt Dan is sporting is the one with the very first 10 episode names. Those so are our I first 10 uh, methods of the torture. Camera. Fascination, white room, and the like. Uh, it's like <laughs> and everything else. Yeah, it's like a bacon <laughs> and bacon cheap. and bacon shirt. It's, yeah. I love that. That's one of the first ones that we put out. I love it. Now, luckily for everyone in Brazil, the practice of Pau de Rara was outlawed in the 1970s. And since it was outlawed, it definitely isn't used anymore, right? <laughs> he does the camera, the look in the camera thing. <laughs> I have no doubt it is not being used anymore. Of course not. They would no. not do something like that. Unless you believe the ungodly amount of people that have been taken in by the Brazilian police and the several humanity groups, the Brazilian police still do this to this day. Quietly use the parrot's perch as an interrogation technique or a punishment for dis, uh, disobedient prisoners or suspects. Um, whether this is true or not, we have no real idea. You know, there's not camera crews busting into police stations to record their torture rooms and find people in, you know, the parrot's perch. And uh, the people who come out of there, they're, you know, uh, it's obviously they're saying that, oh, it's just propaganda. That, that's not true. We don't do it. We treat everybody with, you know, dignity and respect here. Uh, sure, whatever. I have no doubt they are completely full of shit yeah. in saying that, though. But not to judge any of our Brazilian police officer listeners here, but I assume you're completely full of shit when you say that you don't do it. Now, with the ascension of uh, Bolsonaro to the president of Brazil a few years ago, a man that has praised the use of Pau de Arara 
and the men that used it, nothing would surprise me. Uh, again, he was voted out, uh, I believe it was last year. But he he wanted Ustra to become a national hero because of his use of this type of torture. He he's a torture <laughs> works, how the auto works. Uh we should use it more often. It was up to him. People would we'd be hanging from poles in courtyards. Uh the motherfucker just absolutely loved it. Luckily he was taken <laughs> out of power. Hopefully things in Brazil are getting a little bit better, but you know, you can only cross your fingers so hard. That's like French president building a statue for El Gilles. <laughs> or what he, Gilles, right? Like, like yeah, and then standing there and be like, National treasure. There's no <laughs> Put evidence. On the bank notes. There's no evidence he actually did yeah. it. <laughs> national treasure. Which, if yeah. it wasn't for all the child murder, he probably could be a national hero. But, you yeah, know, that's true. the child murder. Yeah, Exactly. I just imagine them putting a picture of him on their notes as himself and his cousins carrying corpses at the back of one of the castles. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, if, if we put a a statue of Gacy up in Chicago. Be like, if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the murder, he's just a, a, you know, a guy who entertained kids at children's parties and was a successful business owner. Yep. So, you know. Dahmer was just a hard work and candy maker. <laughs> Actually, don't know enough about him, but we will learn about him. Maybe eventually. He's not. Uh, he's not one I have on the list because he's not really a process killer. Torture. He's more of a product yeah. killer. Um, he did torture them a little bit before he killed them, but he tried to just kind of get it done and over with, so he could, uh, you know, play with the bodies. <laughs> uh. Whatever. Um, but that's honestly all that I have for this. I looked everywhere. There's a book called The Parrot's Perch that I was really hoping would have a bunch of good stuff in it. I tried to get through it. I couldn't get through it. It just, it was, it just wasn't a good book. Uh the part what I could get through and skip ahead and everything it seemed like 90% of it was just talking about living in Brazil uh okay and then you know the last little bit of it was about the actual torture of it um I if you want to go get it it's the parrot's perch I do not remember who who wrote it just type in the parrot's perch book it'll come up um it just wasn't. It just wasn't great. From what I could get through, it just wasn't great. So I was hoping to have more for you. But that was really all. All there is to it, you know. You know what is great though. Yeah. Was it? You know what is great? What? This. Sort your fucking life out. <laughs> sure. If it'll if it'll appear. Oh, I'm disappeared. Oh, just a pair of arms. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah. It does look good. It does look really good. I think our merch looks great. Does. I got the hoodie too, so yeah. I don't think that's. Well, I don't uh, think that the weather's gonna too s- warm. Uh, I have it here behind me. I like it lives on right it, it lives on my it lives on my desk chair basically. But that's the yes, it's beautiful. The logo on it looks pretty sweet. Looks sweet. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to find anything about pop culture. On this or not? No, man. I just kept thinking of parrot things the whole time. I was sitting there. <laughs> just, as soon as you mentioned it to me, I was just like, Polly, want a podcast? <laughs> but uh, parrots aren't. No, there's not. Parrots aren't the torture uh, in this. It's the it's 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 the stick in the ropes. Yeah, I was really hoping it'd just be a bunch of parrots, parrots. talking to you. You're tied to a stick. Saying really irritating parrots. things. Yeah. <laughs> No, that would be fun, though. Um, but we've had a couple, uh, a few long episodes in a row, so putting out a, a shorter one, I don't think is um, horrible. No issues with that. Yeah, we've yeah, had a nice little, um, yeah, like you know, a bit of a palate cleanser. Yeah. Uh, before we after get to all the, yeah, next after week's... all the shit with our other good buddy there last week, you know, fucking 
Jesse. Jesse. Uh, appreciate yeah. everybody that went and listened to Jesse. I know that I, the, the serial killer cult ones aren't everybody's favorite with us because they're here for something, you know, a certain thing. Um, but, you know, I like talking about that t- um, stuff every once in a while. And, uh, it's fun. I'd give a l- little shout out to uh, the gang in work. Uh, like, um, I can only assume that they're both listening, but I know Ross definitely, good old Ross. Fair play to you, Ross. Had a little listen. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what he said. Yeah. Uh, it basically is, um, Yoke was for the Jesse H. Pomeroy. Oh, I thought you said something else. He said, uh, where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, Ross, where we come up with this stuff. Um, Kevin messages me and says to me, hey, this is what we're doing. And I say, okay. <laughs> so, and then I show up. And I get it from history. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get say, it from who's things the most that despicable happen. motherfuckers to ever live? And then a list pops up, and I go, ooh, that seems interesting. So that's what we talk about. <laughs> I said, I actually got Jesse H. Pomeroy from a book. Um, again, not a really well-written book. They actually had some of the um, information wrong in it. They had Charles Down as his father instead of his brother. Um Ah, and his, okay. his father was Thomas, so he got a few things wrong. Uh, but I can I kind of feel after listening back that there's possibility that old Jesse didn't do that murder down the basement, and it might have been the guy who owned the other store because he sent them the other ones there, and he hid the body there or something. Yeah, potentially, like it might not have even been like Jesse's brother, like that did it because. The other guy sent the what? Like you even asked the question, why would you send somebody to a dress shop? Yeah, to buy a notebook. Oh, the guy and who then owned the other. St- okay, okay. Now, I, now I get what you're saying. Yeah, the guy who owned the uh, um, the little general store that she went to first. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, why didn't you go to Miss Pomeroy's for it? It's like, why would you send her there in the first place? And then he paid off, um, the kid. To say that he saw her with Jesse right before he died. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he gave him all the we notebooks should, yeah. he wanted for free. Yeah, maybe. We should ask him to be a guest and see what he says. <laughs> yeah. If anybody knows don't how to get hold much. of anybody in uh, 1870s Boston, let us know so we can get him as a guest. <laughs> I did not do that to that little girl. If he says that, then I'd be very impressed. <laughs> you get that much out of him. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to our patrons, uh, Inquisitor Willow Quinn Fowler, Executioner Shagavani, and our torture noob NX, MX Sinister 26. Uh, thank you so much. And if you would like your name shouted out on the show and get a bunch of extra extras to go with it, um, sign up for a Patreon at patreon.com slash torture pod. We have four tiers to choose from. And now if you're kind of on the fence about whether to subscribe or not, well, now you can sign up for a free seven day trial to our cult leader tier, which gives you all the goodies. Yeah. I got an email from Patreon uh, a few days ago, actually saying, Hey, people can have a seven day free trial now. And I was like, well, fuck starting that. So I went, yeah, yeah. You know, got everything worked up. Um, there's a, you can only do it for one tier. So 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 choose your most popular tier. Cult leader tier, you get pretty much everything that you would get with the executioner tier or the inquisitor tier. I mean, um, minus like the merch stuff, the the mug that you will get sent uh, if you're there for three months uh, in a row. Being able to get a sit in on a recording which we need to set up so we can eventually do um all that stuff so you get you get most of the of the goodies with the cult leader tier so sign up free seven day truck here's another little thing for you too is that there's actually a sale on redbubble at the moment 20 percent off t-shirts Ooh, i'm looking at them right now just wanted to double check because i saw it during the night um so 20% 20% off t-shirts 20% percent get your t-shirts yeah we have a lot of t-shirts to pick from um, yeah, well, anything that we have, you can get put onto a T-shirt. That's there. Yeah, so, every every as as every aware. design that we have can get a T-shirt. Most of them go on hats, uh, onesies. I found we found out uh, you can get them on baby clothes, yeah. shower curtains, clocks, all that stuff. 
Um, but if you again, if you're on the fence about our Patreon, go sign up for the free seven day trial. It's our cult leader tier. You get everything, all the goodies except merch and stuff. Uh, if you like it, then there's no need to do anything after you sign up. Payment will be processed after seven days. Don't like it or don't want it, just simply cancel before the seven days are up, and you'll be charged nothing. It's easy. Um, but Sweet. Honestly, that's really all we got. So please go follow us on Instagram and all the other social medias at TorturePod. Email us, TorturePod at gmail.com if there's anything you'd like for us to cover. If you have any comments or if you have any fan art. Again, I would love some fan art. Uh, rate and review on Apple. Follow or subscribe on whatever service you listen to. Head over to our YouTube page so you can see the little snippets and excerpts from the show. And you can see, you know, Dan and and myself. <laughs> if you'd like to donate to the show, you can on our link tree, which is on our socials, or you can find us, buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash torture pod, which can be found on our link tree. Uh, you can go again to our Patreon, patreon.com slash torture pod, or go buy some merch. Well, as Dan says, apparently t shirts 20% off right now. Redbubble.com slash people slash torture pod. Uh, I can tell you exactly what's twenty percent off right now because I'm sitting in most of the stuff right now. Yeah, hats are twenty percent off. People, you can get this bad boy right here. Twenty yeah. percent off. T-shirts are twenty percent off. The mouse pad is also twenty percent off. Ooh. I'm actually tempted to buy one of those myself. <laughs> um, it seems that all apparel is twenty percent. It's like everything except for the stickers right now. Okay. Phone cases, everything actually, because I was only into the T-shirts at the time. So, um, you too can get a onesie for your baby. Telling everybody if to you sort so wish. their fucking life out. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Yay. All right, well, our yeah. next episode will officially be our one year, as they say, potiversary. So, oh, yeah. it'll be our season finale. Now, that doesn't really mean anything, because I don't think we're going to be skipping any weeks because of it. It's just when you look at our shows, instead of a S01, uh, there'll be an S02, because it'll be a, uh, technically our second season. Um, but we can go with a, a big episode that I think everybody's been waiting for. So, hint for our next episode, when you think of torture, you think of this. Dan's the in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> In life. <laughs> marriage uh dan any words of wisdom oh god yeah i completely uh forgot about this thing um uh i i don't know re- being honest I, I i kind of damn it i've been put in the spot <laughs> <laughs> I got put in the spot you, you forgot it was coming but it was uh, i don't know yeah strong strong people don't put orders down to lift them up how about that one right there that's an actual that is proper, great you know i like that yeah yeah um that is a good one always smell ham before you put it on your sandwich that is an also a good one so i don't do you guys yeah. have carl budding meat over there what the Carl? Carl Budding. Is that spelled with a C or a K? C. So uh, Carl Carl Budding. Carl Budding. B U D D I N G. Um, oh, Budding. Oh yeah. Carl, okay. it's it's like no. it's like single serve. Oh, well, we have different versions of that. Like it's a it, yeah, they got cold cuts thing you put in the package. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just single serve thing for a sandwich in a package that you buy, so you don't have to buy a full thing. Um, yep. So when when my wife and I first got together. Uh, we were at her house and she was making lunch for for all of us, you know, her kids and, and, and me. And uh, she loved to get the Carl Budding meat because it was cheap and she just opened a package, put it on a piece of bread, give it to the kid, you know, whatever. Um, so she makes me and herself sandwiches and we go sit down and we're sitting there eating and she takes a big old bite out of hers and her face just drops. And she goes, Ugh. and she looks at the sandwich and all the meat inside, like not the meat on the outside where you would see it through the packaging, that was all, you know, pristine and glistening and beautiful. But all the meat on the inside between those was just white fuzz. Nice. <laughs> and I thought she was going to vomit. And ever since then, I have a hard time buying Carl Pudding meat. Now. My wife still, <laughs> she's still like, I'm going to marry this woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's still like, go get me some you know, roast beef for a sandwich. And she still wants me to get Carl Pudding. She didn't learn a lesson. Um, 
but but yeah so whenever i think of that stuff that's what i think of just which is fitting for this show um but yeah smell yeah, your ham before you put it on a sandwich yeah we're going to get a going to get carl budding t-shirt sorted out now for our <laughs> in that case carl budding the mold's on the inside yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well take care of yourselves and take care of one another and we'll see you goodbye